Hi, and welcome to the Electronics and Programming Beginner's Guide. Today we have a new addition to our uh, EAPBG toolbox, and this is the SparkFun Hot Air uh, Rework Station. What this basically is, is a really fancy heat gun that is temperature and flow controlled and air comes out the nozzle. And today I wanted to unbox it and play around with it a bit. A hot air rework station is primarily used as the name implies rework, meaning that you soldered something down and oops, I screwed up, but uh, I don't have a good way to unsolder it. So a hot air rework station Got a little manual, we'll take a peek at this here in a minute. Uh, provides hot air to uh, heat up a piece of work. Uh, and uh, this allows you to do certain things that you can't just otherwise do with a general soldering iron. So in the box here, we'll slide that back a little bit. We have the station itself. <laughs> and I will eventually do a teardown on this, mostly because I'm curious of what's going on inside. And uh, this is from SparkFun, so I'm curious to see, you know, what SparkFun chose to uh, brand their name onto, because they're not actually the manufacturer of this. SparkFun basically finds a manufacturer, usually in China, which... Uh, Made in China, right on the back there. And that manufacturer will brand um, something that they already make with their name. It's just a matter of uh, changing the silk screen out. Let's peel this guy off like that. And so from the front panel you see here, we have on and off, duh. <clears throat> We've got a knob for this is for your flow control here and then we have a knob for temperature and this display here will display here will read out that temperature it looks like it will display fahrenheit or celsius but i don't see any kind of switch to uh change that there may be something on the side or the back or maybe there's some sort of mode. We can uh, look at the instructions to see how to uh, switch that. <clears throat> so uh, in the box, we also get the power cord. Just your standard garden variety power cord. We'll connect that in a second. You get the wand holder. And we'll go ahead and attach that here in a second. And then you also get a couple of nozzles. Let me pop those out of there. Oh, come on. There we go. And that looks like it. Go ahead and throw that in there. The wand here, this is the business end of the wand, so to speak. You know, of course, caution, hot air comes out of here because it's a hot air station. But the heating element sits in here, and then the air pump sits in the, in the station here. And the uh, air control will control the speed of the pump in here and sending air this way. And then the temperature control will set a set point. And that set point is then measured by a sensor that's here in the heating element. And then that's what's displayed on the screen. And this thing basically is a closed loop temperature controlled system where uh, it measures what is coming out and then adjusts the amount of power that comes to the wand to be able to control the, uh, the temperature of air that comes out. So uh, then you have these nozzles. You can either open, use this wide open, just, you know, heat something up, or you can put these nozzles onto it like that. Um, usual, like there's a screw on here. Oh. 
like that that you can tighten down but this nozzle's on there pretty good it doesn't want to come off and that's really all you need is for it not to fly off whenever you're working on stuff and then you can slip this one on and same thing it's you know kind of giving that a nice tug it's not falling off etc then you pop it off to use whatever that using to actually tighten these down unless that's the only nozzle you'll ever use is completely pointless the one holder the idea behind it is that you have your wand here and you are done using it the end is really hot you don't want to just set it down maybe it'll touch something it'll burn something maybe the table and so you want to hang it up somewhere like that and the one holder kind of holds it almost positively where it traps it kind of on the end here and so it doesn't accidentally fall out of there if we look at the base itself here uh, you can see that there's two holes on this side and there's two holes on this side which has the screw in it and this is kind of a nice feature because the base becomes ambidextrous. ambidextrous do you want to put the one holder here or do you want to put the one holder here and i'm thinking we want to stick it over on this side so we grab our trusty screwdriver that's the wrong end favorite screwdriver Go ahead and pull the screws out of this side. Like that, and stick the screws over onto this side. Now, some of the uses for, a, for a, the hot air uh, rework station. That, as I mentioned, as the name implies, it's meant for rework. So uh, let's say you have a large, uh, a count, pin count, uh, surface mount package, or even like a dip, for example. It doesn't even have to be large pin count. There we go, that's actually a lot easier. And you want to peel it back off the board. Well, trying to heat up all of those pins is a nightmare. There are some tools that you can do that, some very low melting point solder that you can kind of flood the field with and then try to get all the pins molten at the same time but that's kind of a pain in the butt this on the other hand allows you to kind of flood the whole area with hot air like that ta-da so this kind of lets you flood the whole area you know if this is your chip you kind of gently work air around it and eventually it brings the temperature of the board all the way up end of all the pins and you can grab some you know grab your trusty tweezers and pluck the chip off uh, other things this can be used for is let's say you have a component like a heat sink that needs to get soldered down and it's a fairly high thermal mass uh, you can use this to go ahead and heat up that heat sink along with maybe a soldering iron and something like that to try and work some solder into it because with a heat sink if you can't put enough heat into it the as soon as the solder uh, hits it it will you know just cool and you'll get cold icky solder joints and you know it'll be like crap also this can be used to put components uh, down for example um certain components uh the name eludes me at the moment it's a tl something package but anyway it's a flat package that you lay down on top of a circuit board it's you know fairly large obviously not this big but it's it's fairly large and oftentimes you have a lot of copper under it because you're using the board as the heat sink well again you can put some solder on that pad and then use the hot air to bring everything up to temperature because it said it's going to be very difficult to do with a soldering iron since you can't induce heat that quickly and then put the component down or even already have the component sitting there and as you heat the uh, component up you'll actually kind of see it boop, pop into place and i will do a soldering video with this guy you know sometime in the future Let's take a quick peek at the manual which came with the unit here. It has a very uh, simple table of contents. Maybe you can zoom in on that a little more. There we go. 
course it has copious amounts of safety things because with a hot air gun it's hot you can burn yourself or set your house on fire or whatnot some item checklists goes through the um how do you put it the specifications it does look like this my friend Fahrenheit temperature, Celsius temperature only be set in manufacturing process. So, oops, sorry. Right there. So it looks like this thing only displays one, which is probably Celsius. <clears throat> and then it goes through the overview here of, you know, putting the wand holder on the operating instructions. And it does show you how to disassemble the wand because the heating element in here can actually burn out over time and Sparkfun does sell a replacement element for this that you can get and install yourself. It gives you the directions right here. Now behind the scenes here, I went and uh, plugged that in and now we can go ahead and power it on. Make sure that the wand is facing someplace where we won't burn ourselves and go ahead and throw the switch. There we go. You can see that a C has lit up. Uh, the flashing here, uh, that's the <clears throat> multiplexing of the display. <clears throat> Meaning that uh, it doesn't show you all the digits kind of at the same time. It shows them to you a little bit at a time. You can see that the C here is lit up. Like I said, this, is, this display is going to be it's in C. And uh, according to the directions, this light here is going to start to uh, flicker whenever this thing uh, reaches operating temperature. Do, 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 maybe we can, ooh. That's actually a nice feature. I did not know that it did that. So what you're seeing here is a readout of what the airflow is going to be. So here we're at 25. I, and then what it probably goes up to 100 or 99. There we go. So that's max airflow. And then if you turn it down, that's min airflow like that. And with temperature, it shows you your uh, set point, what you're adjusting it to like that. And probably if you give it a second, now does it show your actual temperature? No, it doesn't look like it. That according to direction, it's this light here is going to start flickering whenever it's up to temp. which should be about three seconds, but that is actually taking quite some time. Oh, it does show you the real. Okay, so the instructions appear to be um, oops, misleading here. Sorry, it's kind of difficult to hold, try and hold it. So I can turn it down. There we go. So, okay. After you change the temperature, you'll actually see it come down. So the, this, at, right as you're turning it, so let's set it to like two, 260. So as you're turning it, the display shows you your uh, set point. And then after you're done turning it, the display switches to your actual temperature. And so now this thing is blowing to 160 degree air. Alrighty, well, uh, now that we've kind of got it set up and played with it a little bit, let's um, do some soldering. So something to note here before we uh, move on is if I shut it off, you actually hear the pump kick on to a uh, high speed and uh, 
on the display you see the temperature is counting down and this thing will automatically shut off when the temperature hits 100 degrees C because what this thing is doing is it's shut off the, it's shut off the heating element in the unit here and now it's pumping air through to make sure that the heating element cools off to what's I don't know if safe is a good word for it but to a place where to increase the longevity of the <coughs> uh, heating element and then once you hit 100 degrees the thing should shut off there it is and it shuts off just as advertised now for those of you that have never seen one this is a pan of ice let me see if i can get a good like that uh, these things are pretty much awesome sauce that uh, they hold things you loosen the snob here and now you can take this vice and reposition it all kinds of ways you can actually pluck this out and there are different attachments that you can stick in here they make all kinds of different board board, uh, board holders etc and so now i can take this and rearrange it so it's facing kind of this way yeah it's good enough proper open and we have a circuit board to play with this is a circuit board out of a hard drive if you look at it this is a single-sided load meaning that all of the components are on this side and not on here and so this board was almost exclusively designed to be pick and place manufactured and even the uh, connector here this is an ID, this was an ID hard drive that the connector all the pins are on top and so you you know you apply paste to everything you set all your components down you send it through the reflow oven and so we're going to pop some components off of this and opening a vice really exciting stuff like that and you always want to particularly when using the hot air gun you always want to have sufficient ugh, it's got some horrible glare on that let me try and fix that for you like that you always want to have the board you know have some space between the board and other things because it's really easy to burn both the board or whatever surface you're working on and so let me uh kick it over to macro mode and let's look at some components and desolder things which is what this was specifically made for all right there we go we've got the board sitting in a vise here we've got some nice hot air coming out of it and we're going to pop open pop off let's say one of these capacitors look uh, you soldered down the wrong capacitor you want to change it out and the capacitor's got pads on both sides here and so it's difficult to do with a uh, soldering iron you there are some things where you can do it with two soldering irons or something along those lines and so we're just going to kind of you know we're trying to keep the heat kind of right in this area here kind of try it we do probably want to kick up the airflow some this is in the super delicate part so you want to try and kind of keep it moving because you don't want to just put a whole bunch on in the same area because you can burn the board you can burn the chip you can and there we go ta-da and the capacitor comes off so you can obviously do other components like you can grab this little capacitor here kind of work it a little bit work it a little bit Sorry, I'm trying to do this in the viewfinder. Not super easy. And there we go. And the component comes off like that. Easy peasy. 
we can also do a larger component with it. Let me reposition this. So this guy here, this is a prime example of something that uh, you might need a hot air gun to put down because see this big old pad right here? This pad is a heat sink and it looks like it might be connected to the ground plane. Uh, most likely this is a multi-layer board so it's going to be pretty thick and so we can use the same technique, kind of heat it up and pluck this component right off. Again, be sure to kind of keep it moving, that you don't accidentally burn anything. And I'll show you this in a second. You do have to be careful with plastic components. Because what you can get, there we go. Ta-da, and it comes right off. What you can get is that some components were not meant for the temperature and we're at 2 268 is what we're set to now we're being fairly mild this this may not be a it might be it might be not a, a heat resistant type component which it seems to actually be holding up pretty well what we can try and do is actually try and peel this whole component off here little bit of a tall order but let's see if we can do it you kind of go through and gently heat everything up we might really have to crank the let's go to full like that And what I'm doing is just kind of going up and down. All the pins here trying to, whew, that is toasty. Trying to get them all to uh, kind of come loose at the same time. Like I said, this is kind of a tall order for this. Watching somebody unsolder things, really exciting stuff. Ooh. I hear something happening. So that guy's molten. Let's kind of move on to over here. Uh, the station's not terribly loud, which is kind of nice. I mean, I've, I've heard some of these that are really quite loud. Yeah, this may be a little much. Uh, we'll try it here in a different orientation here in a second, but uh, let's... Let's peel up this guy. This guy seems primed for peeling. So same kind of thing. You just kind of gently move the air around. On the other side here. And just kind of gingerly test.
Not yet. You do have to be patient with this that uh, you don't you want to bring it up to temperature in a reasonable amount of time but also you don't want to accidentally damage things particularly if you're trying to rework a board And this is a much more spread out chip than the kind of the previous components that we did. You can't keep the heat quite as local. Kind of wonder if this chip is glued down. It's a possibility. I guess we'll find out. Not quite the way we wanted to do it because you can see the chip kind of peeled up unevenly. But at the rate it's coming, I do have a feeling that this chip might be glued down, which a chip that's glued down isn't super conducive to rework. but we can gingerly kind of work it off like that. So nope, the chip was not glued down, but we were able to remove it without damaging any pads like that. And that is exactly what we were going after. Now, another way you can use this, let me flip that back on, is by using this end with nothing on it and then heating the under the heating the underside of the board that way you can more easily bring the whole board up to temperature which isn't super critical for a component like this which is a thin quad flat pack but you can actually do components like bga's ball grid arrays with a hot air gun this takes a lot of patience and experience and you do that by heating up the underside of the board. So again, let's try this. So right now, we're heating the underside of the board and we're gonna try and pop this guy off here, which you can see just so many pins on this guy. But, uh, this is also possible as I showed you because this has a uh, only a single sided load all the components on top because you can run into your problems uh, particularly when you have a dual sided load if you're trying to do a chip underneath components may actually fall off due to just pretty much just gravity pulling the components down and if you kind of just ever so gently feel it that that chip is getting hot so temp you know um, how would you put it uh, heat is making its way from the underside of the board to the top side of the board. And I said, I'm just kind of gently moving this around to try and spread the heat out over the whole area from underneath. And we'll see when this thing uh, hits, which actually I do want to, because we're doing this from the underside of the board, I do want to turn the temperature up a little more and I have the flow set to full because I'm really trying to inject a whole bunch of heat through this board. As I mentioned, this is most likely, uh, you know, from all the vias you can see around here and so 
few things actually coming off of this chip. Most likely this is a four, six or eight layer board. This is definitely not just a two layer board. So there is quite a bit of copper under here that we do have to kind of get the heat to penetrate through. So yeah, it's very exciting stuff. Just like watching paint dry, trying, you know, getting a board to heat up. Nope, still not yet. Also, I don't know if you've noticed, but there's a little bit of flickering in light. And actually it's one of my lights seems to be unhappy about the heating element that's in this thing. Actually, now that I look at it, both are that as soon as I turn the soldering station off, the lights turn off. I'm sorry, the lights don't turn off. The lights quit flickering. Nope, still not quite there. So this is a slow process. Let me crank the heat up even a little bit more. So we're, we were at 260 before, now we're actually at 350. Kind of moving it around, moving it around. It's definitely nice and hot. Just haven't quite hit that, that point where the chip will release. We should be pretty close by now. This may be the point where we want to hit some on top. And back underneath. Sorry, this video isn't you know, that much more exciting. I was hoping this chip would come off sooner than that. Or I guess faster than that would be the better way of saying it. Oh, there we go. It's getting there. I saw movement. There it is. And it's also most likely because this is the product of uh, lead-free solder. And if you've ever used lead-free solder, lead-free solder sucks. There we go. Ta-da, ooh, there we go. See, here's a perfect example of when to put a part down a hot air reflow station is awesome is because see this uh, thermal pad underneath you know this is actually kind of nice worth the wait the thermal pad underneath right here this thing has a lot of thermal mass underneath it and so that's just probably why it took so long to get this thing off because we had to uh, push enough heat into this to be able to peel that off and so if we wanted to, I don't know, reuse, reuse this chip or something like that, which I don't know why you would, that the chip came off cleanly, the pins came off cleanly, it doesn't look like anything's broken. So this chip, theoretically, you could put back down onto something. Now for something slightly more exciting, I've cranked the heat and the uh, airflow up to its highest. And let's see how plastic components like this. You can see that it's already charred, it's already melting. This is the kind of thing that you can run into accidentally. You know, you're, let's say, trying to take off this capacitor over here. Everything's going great until you notice, oops, I've torched. You know, of course that guy pops right off since 
the temperature is not that high, but you know, oops, I've torched my connector. And then after that, you hosed, you need to replace the connector, you know, or uh, let's see if I can do this. If let's see, the airflow is set to high. You're trying to do a component over here. Oops, we're not in the frame. We are trying to do, let's say, uh, whatever this guy is like that. You're, well, it's already loose here, but you're working on it. You're working on it. And, you know, some other components kind of blow off the board. You can kind of see the... And so, so I have it turned up to a really high temperature right now, a really high flow. So, and so, you know, oh, so much collateral damage. Oh, man. <laughs> That guy just popped right off of there, which is kind of funny. I said, you can do a lot of collateral damage with a hot, uh, hot air reflow gun, that uh, hot air reflow station. Or if we kind of come over here, oh, we're doing this over here. And wow, the surface tension that it uses is pretty good, but you can see the components kind of blow away. And it's particularly when you're trying to do something um, really small really precise you know the stuff just kind of flies out of the way or um, one of my favorites is you're trying to solder something down you know you're trying to put this let's say this, this capacitor back on get that in your, uh, oh I got it on there I got it on there and then it boop, blows away which doesn't seem to be a huge issue with this oh there we go you can kind of see it do it go uh, But you get the idea. So this has been an unboxing of the Spark Fun. Actually, I guess this is the 303D hot air uh, rework station. We can go ahead and flip it off and we can watch it cool off again as the temperature drops. And as we saw, we have a digital adjustment for the airflow where you can choose between 25 and 99%. And then we have a digital temperature adjustment and that as you adjust it, it shows you what the temperature is. And then once you've set it, it will uh, then show you what the actual temperature of the probe is. Looks like the red light just means that it's on. The instructions uh, were talking about how that light shows you uh, whether the station's up to temp or not, but it looks like the light is uh, just on all the time. Uh, so the station, I just turned it off. It's cooling down now that it comes with uh, tips, this guy and this guy. Or you can just use it without the tips at all. There we go, just like that. It's nice that the top is metal because you can, you know, set the hot tips on there. You're probably not going to uh, damage it, but I wouldn't set, you know, super scalding one layer, let it get to uh, the fairly low temperature. We saw how we can even do some reflow stuff with, you know, there it goes, it shut off, do some reflow stuff without the tip on by heating the, the underside of the board, which Basically, I was just kind of underneath of it going, but on the edge of the table so I can actually have this fairly vertical. We looked at how the, uh, we can remove components off boards and we can do, you know, pop chips off or was it, you know, very large thin quad flat packs without damaging things. And we even had the nice little surprise of that thermal pad being under the underside there. So I will do a teardown of the station, as I mentioned earlier, uh, eventually. I will also do some soldering with videos with this, that what we looked at today was just, you know, peeling things off the board, but it's actually kind of an art to put things back down onto the board with one of these stations. And I wanted to go through it. Um, and so this has been an unboxing of the SparkFun Electronics uh, 303D uh, hot air rework station. If you have any questions, you're more than welcome to comment down below. And as always, uh, if you like the video, give it you know a nice thumbs up and uh, have a great day.